In November 1994, Aretha played Carnegie Hall and told the audience that she swore off cigarettes and is on a diet now, okay? And she plans to lose a lot of weight with the help of Slim Fast and Young Dick. If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share, and subscribe because it is so important to our success here on the YouTube. And if you are not a part of our book club, please remember to hit the Patreon link below and or the join button here on YouTube and you can be privy to all the shenanigans before YouTube gets it, if the YouTube gets it. Okay. Now let's talk about David Ritz, uh, Respect, The Life of Aretha Franklin, Part 26. So where we left off, Riri is sitting down with the Jet magazine. Mm -hmm. Jet and Riri is like this, okay, when they ain't mad at each other, because you know just as much as Jet will boost her up, they will drag her ass down. Okay, but anyway, she's sitting there, she's talking to the Jet Magazine, and she is telling the Jet Magazine about her album, What You See Is What You Sweat, okay? I don't even like that title, okay? But anyway, it was the weakest selling album of Aretha Franklin's at Arista, okay? Now, let's move on to the juicy part, right? The juicy part is that she is also telling the Jet Magazine that, yes, honey, I am young and tender, Wealthy, beautiful, buxom, all the things that a ninja would want. She's telling them that she rich and she ready to mingle, right? Riri, you can't tell these dirty dick young niggas that you rich, okay? Because they will find you, girl. They will find you and spend up all your money. And matter of fact, they will find you and steal your puss, girl. Willie Wilkinson right there holding her puss and her fur, you know? She said she ain't looking for a man in the celebrity world. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. You was telling all these DDMFs everywhere, come find me. But anyway, she ain't looking for a man in the entertainment world. You know, he ain't got to be spectacular, a public figure, or nothing like that. She just want a man that won't take her for granted. You mean like how you taking Willie Wilkerson for granted? You mean like that? The Aretha. Now, by then, I had lost track of all the times Aretha had promised me that she would never speak to me again, said Lufa. Okay, notice it's Lufa. Okay, some of y'all don't like when I do nicknames, but God damn it, it's Lufa. Okay, but anyway, she was always imagining insults that I had inflicted on her. If I came to perform in Detroit, she would demand tickets for 24 of her best friends, and if I provided 12, it would be a problem. So this husband wouldn't be appreciative for the 12 that she got. She would complain about the 12 that she didn't get. She a piece of work. Luther Vandross goes on to say that it was draining to be her friend, okay? But she couldn't stay, but he couldn't stay mad at Aretha Franklin because after all, it's Aretha. I don't feel and like Re is a bad person, you know? Just like I don't feel like Aries women are bad people. I just feel that you just have to understand them. And if you are able to understand them, then you will be able to receive their type of love. Okay, I said it. All right, now I'm going to move on. In 1991, Aretha and Luther's career were moving in different directions. Power of love is over there. It's up there. Okay? Up there. All right? And Aretha ain't had a hit since George Michael five years ago. I knew you were waiting for me. I knew you were waiting for me. That's the only part I know, because I told you that's not one of my favorite songs. Right? March 92, when Aretha turned 50, she threw herself a lavish party. Mm -hmm. Now, you remember the party that she threw before, that she told the whole world and all the magazines that Detroit Pistons was supposed to come to her party, and Detroit Pistons was over there in L.A. paying the Lakers, and her ass was sitting in the damn easy chair, soaking, 
with a security guard behind her, rubbing her shoulders. Okay, but this time for her 50th birthday, they came, you know. And you know what's crazy to me? It's like, Riri, you expect for people to show up to your events, but you don't want to go to other people's events? Like, it's, that's, that's, but you know the Aries, that's a selfish sign. I love you. I love you, Aries women. I love you bitches, but y'all just be tripping. Who else came to the 50th party was her brother Vaughn. Vaughn, nigga, where you been? I've been looking for you for 25 fucking parts of this book. Where the fuck you been, nigga? Vaughn says that their relationship grew stronger once Cecil passed. Mm -hmm. It always takes for you to experience a death for you to realize how important family is. You know, that's what I'm going through now. Oh, and by the way, guys, I'm not responding to comments. I'm reading your comments, but I'm just, I don't know. I'm not all the way there yet. You know, it's coming. I think once we have the service, I think, you know, I can, you know, I'll be back to normal. But as of right now, y'all, I'm just doing my work so I can just keep getting paid. Okay. I love y'all. I love y'all for your continued support. Thank you. So anyway, back to, like I was saying, when Cecil died, uh, Riri started reaching out to Vaughn, okay? Vaughn eventually took over uh, management services for her, okay? She began calling me to help her arrange her travel and keep her business affairs in order. The calls became more frequent in the 90s when she was having her problems with the IRS. The boogeyman, the boogeyman, y'all, Bo the boogeyman... How many times did I say that? Because you can't say it like five times. Because if you say that shit five times, that nigga will show up. I had retired from a long military career in 1974 when I was 40. Afterwards, I had lived in the South where I worked for the Postal Service. When Aretha asked me to help her, I was already in my 60s and contemplating a calm retirement. Show business held no appeal for me at the time because of the great love I had for our mother. I felt obligated to help Riri, okay? Now, because Vaughn, her brother, had a solid military background, okay? You know, sometimes the military people, they lead the military, but they be still in the military, okay? If you know what I'm saying, right here, in the military. Now, all you military people, some of you military people still be in the military, even after retirement, but anyway... Vaughn said because he was very well organized, you know, and had discipline, it was hard for him to work with Riri mm -hmm. because Riri was out of pocket. He couldn't understand why his sister was so unorganized. You know, he said he found himself apologizing for his sister's poor behavior frequently. And that wasn't his, uh, I can't, uh, 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 I'm not into apologizing for bullshit. You know, a lot of Aretha's antics to her brother was unnecessary, you know, and it put him in a compromising position because whenever he went to her and said, Re, I don't think you should be handling situations this way, I, 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 she would bark at him. Now, Vaughn, let me tell you something. I don't know how it works when you're an older brother. But when you are an older sister, you can tell her to shut the fuck up, okay? Irma, I don't know why Irma didn't tell Riri to go take a seat and suck her thumb, okay? Because when you're the oldest, you have a lot of power when you're older than your siblings, unless you smoking crack or something. You know, you hitting the pipe, smoking crack, shooting dope. They don't really respect you like that. You know, they might come to you for, uh, what is that, advice from time to time, but for the most part, they ain't fucking with you. Vaughn, you seem like a pretty together person, you know? And it sounds like a lot of people that were surrounding Aretha was scared to say you lunch. Vaughn said that when she worked, she really worked. She worked very hard. Very, very, very hard. Okay? But when she wasn't working, she was lazy. Okay? And a man like Vaughn who comes from a strong military background can't understand that. Read, get up, do something with yourself. Why the hell are you laying around watching the soap operas? Okay, Victor Maitland ain't coming here to marry you, girl. So another thing that he talked about in regards to Riri was that although his sister made a lot of money, she always needed a lot more, okay? He kind of figured out his sister's relationship to money when one day they was back there in the dressing room and it was time for her to go out on stage and Riri grabbed her purse, okay? He said that sent signs to him. Why the hell it sent you signs? 
She don't know them niggas backstage. She don't know them. And I know you like, well, all the other ladies on stage don't carry their purse. We don't know or care about them bitches either. I'm carrying my purse with me. So if I ever get on camera, you're going to see me walk on stage with one of my purses. Because if one of my Chanel's get missing back there in the backstage, it's going to be a whole massacre around this motherfucker. Okay? Riri, I got you, but we don't know them new niggas over there. Nearly every Aretha gig that I booked, said Dick Allen, on the William Morris H of the William Morris Agency, required that of her total fee, she had to have $25,000 in cash before she went on stage. That was the money she used to make her payroll. She deducted no taxes and made no record. I'd beg her to implement some system of documentation, but she refused, and in the long run, the peoples came to get her. So in the summer of 1992, 50-year-old Aretha Franklin sang the national anthem at the Democratic National Convention that nominated uh, Bill Clinton. Wait, okay. On. Jerry Wexler called her to congratulate. Mm hmm I seen ya, round there, Riri. You did a great job. Mm hmm Jerry Wexler said that they reminisced, they laughed, and they enjoyed each other's conversation. Okay, that gave Jerry Wexler the courage to ask Riri uh, to join him in the studio, okay, for old time's sake, okay? Riri said, oh, no, 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 I can't do that. I can't do that. Clive is fitting to hook me up with L.A. Reed and Babyface. No, 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 I can't go there with you, Jerry Wexler. Oh, not when we got the baby face in the L.A. Reed right there. Here's another Aretha escapade in 1992. Aretha's sister, Irma, had a brief jolt in her career. Irma had given up any hopes of entertainment, but the people over there in the Europe, okay, used her song, one of her songs, I forget the name of the song, please forgive me, for a Levi's commercial. That gave her career new momentum, okay? The people over there in Europe was like, listen, we want you, okay? We'll give you this. But if you can get your sister, we're going to give you a whole lot of money, okay? Don't forget, Riri don't get on no damn planes, okay? Fuck a plane, all right? So when Aretha was told the situation, Riri just looked at her. What you want me to do? So ultimately, deadlines were not met, you know? Things were not done, and Irma uh, ended up not going over there. She ended up working with children who were in neglectful homes, okay? And that was satisfying to her to help those kids that needed help in the community, okay? That's a satisfying job to me. So next, Spike Lee calls Aretha Franklin to cover Donny Hathaway's Someday We'll All Be Free as the closing song during the credits to Malcolm X. If y'all find the YouTube video, please send it to me because I've been looking for it, okay? And I want to hear Aretha Franklin sing um, Donny Hathaway, Someday We'll All Be Free. I need to hear that, y'all. I do. So, anyway, y'all look, okay, because I'm going to end up saying that name like five times and it's going to be bad. So, just understand when I'm saying the feds, you know, I'm talking about you know, the Ira, Ara, and the S's, okay? You know, I told you, you say his name five times, that motherfucker will appear, okay? I don't want no trouble, so. The IRS stepped in and put a lien on Aretha's assets for $225,000. Her brother Vaughn said, in a way, it was a good thing because it encouraged Aretha to get off her ass and work. Oh, this is a funny one. Okay, so we know that whenever Bill Clinton calls Aretha, so it's two people she don't stand up, or two entities she don't stand up, the Bill Clinton mm -hmm, and charitable events, okay? So anyway, Bill Clinton called her and said, Ree, we need you to come down here and sing, right? Oh, this is hilarious, right? You know what, Ree came down there with her pocketbook and her good fur coat, all right? Who else was there at the event down there to the White House with Bill Clinton was the PETA, okay? The PETA was mad at her, because she had on the old fur coat. Riri responded publicly and said, shut the fuck up talking to me, okay? Shut the fuck up talking to me until y'all niggas stop eating all that um, cow, them hamburgers, 
Okay. Matter of fact, what kind of shoes you got? You got on plastic shoes? Oh, is them leather? Okay, I thought so. Go, okay. Riri, go. Mm, 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 mm. Go, Riri, go. Uh, 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 uh. Wait, let's move on. Vaughn, her brother, had explained to the writer that yes, Riri believed that she was just as hot as all the younger, newer artists, right? But she was too tired to cut a whole new album, right? So what she decided to do was do three songs. That's it. That's motherfucking all. Just three songs. And then, you know, Rhino, you know, the people that do all the classic hit albums, you know, you can just pick some of my classics and go from there. But all I'm doing is three songs. I ain't got enough energy to be singing a whole goddamn album. Anyway, nonetheless, the album, the hits album, went platinum. So in 1994, Aretha participated in the album a tribute to Curtis Mayfield. She hired her longtime associate, Arif Martin, to arrange and produce Mayfield's magnificent The Making of You. The Makings of You. It's been a miracle for what you've done. Please stay right by my side. Two can be one, the righteous way to go. Mm. In a world we know, just believe that I told you so. Okay, getting back to the daggone book review. Okay, y'all know when I'm feeling a song, I got to sing it, no matter how bad I sound. You know, in my mind, I sound good, but, you know, when it get out there, it be on some other shit. But anyway, I found a video of her singing it here on YouTube, okay, Donnie Simpson came to her house to interview her and asked her to sing the song. It's beautiful. I posted it on my Instagram. So if y'all want to see it, drop down in the uh, description bar and you should be able to see it on my Instagram. The Damn. author David Ritz said that when he met Aretha in 1994 to start creating her previous autobiography that she did with him, These Roots, she wasn't honest, honest enough, okay? She, or he felt like she was holding back on everything. Aretha and I planned to complete the interviews for her book by the end of 1995. I estimated that I would need no more than six months to finish the interviewing process, okay? In the end, it took two years. Dozens of interviews were postponed or canceled, but to be fair, whenever they did get together, most times they sat around, ate, drank, and listened to good music. In uh, November 1994, Aretha played Carnegie Hall and told the audience that she swore off cigarettes and is on a diet now, okay? And she plans to lose a lot of weight with the help of Slim Fast and Young Dick. Mm -hmm. Now... When we talked to Ruth Bowman, okay, Ruth Bowman said there's no such dick. She lying. Stop believing her, okay? But on a good note, her brother, Vaughn, said, you know, in regards to the cigarette, cigarettes, she just woke up one day and just went cold turkey. Oof, that is not an easy thing to do. Like I said, them mother hunchy, them Aries women are very strong-willed, okay? Good or bad. When they say that they doing it or not doing it, you better believe. It. Now, you know how Aretha Franklin is always um, canceling out? She made it a point not to cancel on this endeavor, okay? This was the Waiting to Exhale soundtrack. Oh, it was hits all over the place, right? Now, Aretha's song, I forget the name of the song that she did on the soundtrack. You know, it gave her a little traction, but it didn't hit as big as some of the other songs, you know? But anyway, Aretha is still revelant through the waiting to exhale. Did I say relevant? Relevant through the waiting to exhale soundtrack. Now, in 1996, Clive Davis decided that he wanted to hook Riri up with an up and coming producer like Puff Daddy, Dallas Austin, or Jermaine Dupris. Okay? I can't see Riri working with none of them niggas. Okay? None of them. Especially considering that Puff Daddy is the devil. Okay, and I don't want my, well, she already working with one devil. I mean, Clive Davis is the devil, and then I guess Puff Daddy is Dominion. But anyway, she ended up working with Lauryn Hill. As we know, 
and a rose is still a rose. Now getting back to David Ritz writing these roots, he says that while Aretha and I were in the middle of interviews for her autobiography, another memoir was published that caught her attention. Glad it's night. Okay, between each line of pain and glory, Irma spoke about Aretha's dissatisfaction with the book and how her sister complained that Gladys unfairly trashed her. So in the memoir, Knight cites several instances when Aretha snubbed her. According to Gladys, one time at the Grammys, the two women passed each other in the hall. When Gladys said hello, Aretha kept on walking, not bothering to acknowledge her at all or acknowledge that it ever happened. Gladys, in turn, claimed it happened all the time. Mm -hmm. I, we know it happened all the time because she did that shit to Patti LaBelle. We saw it, okay? We saw you. Uh, uh, Bree, I don't know what the hell happened. But anyway, Gladys, in turn, claimed it happened all the time. Gladys said that she did it to her, to her, Mavis Staples, Whitney, and Natalie. It's like she just pretends like we were not there. I don't know why. I don't know. You know, I, 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 good thing I'm not in show business because I don't know, maybe them old school ladies were taught not to cuss each other out. I don't know. Cause it couldn't be Cardi B. You know, that damn Cardi B would have been like, bitch, I know you see me and would have threw a shoe at her old ass. Okay. Then comes Vitero. No, hold on. Petichi. Damn it. Paniki. Anyway. Okay. Let me get into the story. Cause I, I, I listen, this is what happened. Okay. This dude named Pucci, yeah, I think his name Puccini, the Pavarotti, pepperoni pizza, I don't know, okay? Y'all know one of them opera dudes, okay? You opera people, you'll know. You'll break it down for the people in the comments, okay? Anyway, the dude Pucci said, oh, Aretha, I love you, girl. We need to get together and do some music, okay? Because Aretha was working on her operatic Sounds and tones, too, because she wanted to take herself to the next level, okay? Hey, when you get to sing that, you know, Pucci, Pavarotti, you know, Dorme Mente, you know, type stuff, that's on a whole different level, okay? Anyway, Pucci calls Aretha say, come to where I am over here, overseas. I don't know where the hell he was. Italy, France, I don't know. Come. Aretha say, hell no. I'm not going to come because I don't do planes. Pucci say, don't worry about it, baby. Pucci say, don't worry about it, baby, because, you know, I'm going to send you my luxury jet, baby. Luxurious. You ain't got to worry about nothing. Sorry, can't do it, Pucci. I can't do it. You come to Detroit. I'm sorry, Rita. I can't do that because I'm fucked up over here, okay? I'm not able to move. So as soon as I get ready to move, I'm coming to Detroit, okay? Now, those two are playing on the same or singing on the same event, okay? She was to sing um, Respect first, and then Senor Pucci was to come on and sing, let me see what the name of his song he was going to sing, Nese Dharma, okay? Now, Pucci couldn't make it. Pucci called her on the phone and said, Rita, the only person who can do this is you. I need you to do it. Rita said, uh-uh. That's too much goddamn pressure. I don't even know how y'all going to do it and all that other musical artist, you know, musician stuff, okay? Then Aretha, Aretha said, you know what? Fuck this. I'm about to do this. Hey, give me the music. Let me listen to it. See how we want to do it. Let me talk to the pianist or whatever, and let's see how we do it. Aretha did it. It was amazing. That set a whole new precedence for her. Offers started coming in for her to do, you know, that opera stuff, okay? Vaughn said it was the beginning of something new. Now, if you have not already done so, please remember to like, share to Facebook, and subscribe because it is so important to our success here on the YouTube. Now, remember this, the same people that you meet on the way up will always be the same people that you meet on the way down. My naysayers, my patron loves, my bellas, my love bugs, be safe.